Bethlehem has just been so great to us and, and so appreciative of what we do and so receptive. I think I've said this on stage uh, numerous times is that it was one of the first festivals to, to, to book me before I had an agent. Um, I was sending out hundreds of packages on my own and, and following up with people and, and they got in touch with us and, and put us, um, and put us on the festival. And, and it's the one thing that just, it happens every year and we look forward to it. And it's, uh, it's, um, I'm so glad that I actually knew where to send that package. <laughs> seven years ago. That's excellent. Well, yeah. I want to yeah. ask what I want to ask one music question. Phil, it's like you get there. We walk around and it, people, people come up to me with their kid, with their kids and they're like, we, we come and see you every year. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, all, not only that, but we'll, we'll go and play other places all over the country. And people will say that they saw us at music fest. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like Phil, didn't you just see him like walking up during music fest and you're like, Oh, Hey, Yes, absolutely. That's well, kind of the beauty of it. And I even said, I was like, hey, you said, you know, you would meet people at the Red Stag. And you're like, well, what are we waiting for? Let's go get a drink. And so, like, yeah. you're just so, you're like the perfect Music Fest performer because not only is it bringing this very different style, extremely talented band uh, and, and such that's like so Music Fest in and of itself, but then you'll walk around and, and talk with people and get engaged. And that's just what I think the beauty of Music Fest is, is all about right there. It's, it's a lot of fun doing that. And what's funny is that I think for the first um, the first couple of years, we were playing uh, exclusively at the Arts Quest Center and the and the and the uh, movie theaters. Yeah, and and we walked. I mean, we would get out and walk around, but we had no idea uh, what was on the other side of the, the river. and scope of it. Yeah, until we got booked at Volkspatz, and we were like third year, we were like, whoa, there's a whole <laughs> other two sides <laughs> of the city. <laughs> yeah, and I hear people the other way. There are bands who come in and they only ever play, you know, Volksplatz or Plaza Tropical, and they've never seen the stacks. Yeah. So then they get booked like opening for somebody or at the Levitt stage, and they're like, "Oh my God, what, what is, is that?" that? Well, both, I had no idea. Both super cool, but there's both such different sides yep. of a, of mm -hmm. a town. And then on, on top of that, we were also staying at hotels like out in Easton, which sure. is a whole other town. So. It took yeah, a, like, as, as many years as we were playing there. Uh, it wasn't until like the third or fourth year that we really were like, "Oh, Bethlehem!" We mm -hmm. like this, uh, we got the whole the whole picture of what it is. So that's oh Angela. I had a question on that song in particular. Is there an Angela? Was that written for somebody, or is it just? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, not a hard song to write <laughs> <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, the, the, the lyrics, the, uh, people who are watching, go and look up uh, Oh Angela by Blair Crimmins the Hookers. And, Do you think she uh, ever listens to it and she, you know, knows well, it's about her? You well, know, because it's out there now. You can't take it back. You, you know, no, I couldn't. I can't take it back. I cannot take it back. I told her that. <laughs> Do you think, like, her friend? Do you think, it like, was, if I was one of her friends, I would, like, play it when I was around her and stuff? Just yeah. to... I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I wish her the I wish her the best. It was a long sure. time. It was a sure. long time ago. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 unfortunately for her, it turned out to be our most popular song <laughs> in, in Atlanta, um, where we both live. And, uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know it was gonna get. I didn't know it was gonna go that far. But but um, stopping now. So that, that's excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and then there's the 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 pivot point in your career. So like, if we fast forward a little bit to like it's 2007, you're currently uh, like the front man for I believe it was called Bishop Dan. Yeah, Bishop Don. Oh, yeah, sorry. Don, sorry, Bishop Don. Um, alt rock band probably just doesn't feel like you're wearing the right clothes. And then there's this day where you go to walk your dog. And do you want to? Can you share that story? Yeah, uh, sh sure. It was. It was. Um, the band had a good. The band had a good run. I mean, I, I'll say that. But the, there became a point where it felt like we were trying to just do what, whatever would take us to the next level, and and still, you know. Rock music is hard, but uh, I didn't go walk my dog. I, I drunkenly got on a skateboard and let my dog <laughs> pull me around a parking lot. And then I uh, i don't remember much uh, after that. I woke up three days later in the in Grady Hospital, Grady Memorial Hospital, with a massive head injury. Somebody found me in the parking lot, and I was bleeding out of my ear. And mm. um, So massive traumatic brain injury. And uh, it was after that I started to feel a little bit different about music. Um, 
it's it's weird to talk about it now because now I've been just the way that I am for so long. But when I mm-hmm. think about the way you know the, the way that I was and the way I was feeling about music before, it was much different. Something something kind of happened where I found I just found this niche that felt supernatural to me and to everybody that was a fan of the band before they thought it was they kind of thought it was pretty stupid but <laughs> but uh but it but uh, and I was just it doing to it be working my, out yeah I was just and doing you- it from, I was just doing it for myself because like I wasn't interested in the music I was making anymore and I and I just got suddenly just really obsessed with this early jazz stuff and started writing in this style it came seemingly out of nowhere outside of the the accident that I had and and I uh, I've been going at it ever since and you got I think, a lot of success pretty quickly. Um, like you record that first album, you get the opportunity to do that old man cabbage movie, like the sh- to to record the score of it. I mean, it, to 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 orchestrate whatever you 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 yeah. wrote that music. I I had no idea what I was getting into. I, I just like I said, I was uh, like, this is weird. This is weird music. I'm going to try and mix ragtime and, and with like rock and early, and early jazz, and then um, a lot of opportunities sprung up pretty fast. That just you know, like the 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 affirmation just kept happening. Like you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. And yeah, um, that there was, there was a, there was a market for it that I had no idea. Um, I I wanted to talk a little bit before I throw it to Phil for some of the musical things I'm reading up on you, uh, learning about your history and how you were discovered. It was a really, it was an interesting, but like a fun and such a genuinely authentic story. Could you re- relay your middle school talent? Um, yeah, um, it's yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, but yeah, no. So, <laughs> I I transferred schools uh, in the middle of eighth grade due to some bad a bad case of bullies, and so mm. I transferred like mid year, and nobody really knew me. But there was this like talent show that was going to happen, so I I ended up playing. What did I play? I played Misery, uh, the Maroon Five song on the ukulele, <laughs> and um, and I ended up winning the talent show. And so it was. Um, so yeah, that happened, and then a couple years. I get uh, like a few months later, my dad works at the YMCA and was just having a proud dad moment and was sharing the video with some of the people on his board. And one of the men was like, hey, my son has a recording studio in New York, like as a gift to your daughter or something, maybe it'd be fun to like take her up and like record a couple songs, see what it feels like to be in a studio. <laughs> and so he held off for a little bit. And then on my 16th birthday, or for my 16th birthday, we came up from Maryland and I saw a Ben Howard concert and Michael Kiwanuka opened. It was so cool. Awesome. And um, then I went and recorded just two cover songs with my friend and old musical partner, Brad Hammonds. And it after the end of the day, um he kind of asked he was like hey do you want to maybe come back and sing some of my songs and so then it kind of started me down this road of traveling on like a tuesday right after school to make it to rockwood for like a 5 p.m show and and then come right back the next day and so i kind of did that back and forth and my dad was very supportive his he always said like as long as i had i could do any show as long as I didn't miss any school. So I was definitely sleep deprived for uh, <laughs> for my last two years of high school. But um, yeah, and then, so I was doing all that and I slowly started writing my own music. And then when it came time to graduate, um, I ended up deferring a year from college to just move to the city and try and just work to be a musician for a year. Uh, and see what happened. And then, you know, that year was coming to a close and I realized I had my original music going and started doing jazz gigs and I just made it another year and another year. And now I've been here for almost six years. So we're still here. (laughs) (laughs) And so, uh, well, Phil, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good because I share stuff with my daughter all the time. And sometimes you're like, man, is is this uh, too much? Now I know I should just share more. That's right. You never know. You never know who's watching. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it was definitely. It worked out really well. And yes. Yeah, so. That's great. 
So Brad uh, is the, he would have been the gentleman on the guitar behind you in that video yes. for people who were able to be watching. Mm -hmm. um, and that time frame where you start evolving into a tour, that's what becomes Hannah Gill and the Hours, correct? Absolutely, yeah. So I had this really big band, like a three horn piece section and and we would just travel and kind of play my pop stuff. And I, I noticed as I started writing more and more, I kind of tended to go towards that singer songwriter route. So I think I, I kind of wanted to take it down a more broken down road, you know, smaller group. And that's where now it's kind of just Hannah Gill, Definitely. but. Now yeah. let's transition to Music Fest. Um, yeah, yeah. Good, good where, call, where, so I was good, gonna do it for you. Uh, <laughs> where, where, like, because I think it's a good story. So I'll tell a little bit about what was going on for George and I, and then we'll transition to you because I'm, I'm sure bring you're the frustrated. video in as you talk. Sure, you're okay. <laughs> so we're there to see you. We go under the tent and all of a sudden the, 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 the lightning starts to happen. The announcement happens that, you know, the festival's suspended and we're just under there for safety. And like a half hour goes by and I turn to George and I'm like, wait, don't you have your recording stuff on you? And he says, well, yeah, I said, well, I'm going to go ask Hannah Gill, you know, if she'll just do an interview right now. We're like, and don't, he, and, don't bother them. And that's what he was like, you know, <laughs> well, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm, bef I'm already walking away from him at that point because I had you were engaging with us on social media. So I just yeah. said, I just have a feeling she's going to be cool with this. And not only were you cool with it, that you said, I said, what do you mind me? We'll do but make the best of this 15 minute interview or something. You're like, I'm going to go grab my guitar and I'm going to perform for everybody. <laughs> And I was like, that's even better. So we pull out a chair, we make sure we're like as, as tight in to this tent as we can so that we don't get, you know, thunder <laughs> or rain or anything near your instruments. And uh, and then now it's on, you know, let, why don't you share like on your side, you're backstage, you're ready to perform. You've had, you were I know. booked it, prior times for yeah. Allentown, Bethlehem area, you know, and, and now yeah. we're on our third time of getting a cancellation, but we weren't gonna let that happen. I know, yeah, it really did work out so well. I mean, yeah, me and the guys we drove from New York, and it, it was hilarious because we had literally just spoken to the guy about what he was going to say to to intro us, and so like, guy walked on stage, started talking, and I could have. We all thought that he was about to announce us, and then like the lights started flickering, and we were like, "Mother!" Like it, was, it came out of nowhere, and like you can't even be mad because like it's the weather like what are you gonna do you know right. but but no so we were you know we were just hanging out and like i think nobody was really mad i think everybody was more so we were just bummed because we we really we had never played together like as a group in that setting other than like just rehearsals so we were like really excited to do mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and and i was and i was talking to dave tedeschi the my drummer and he was saying like oh you know you should play a song and i didn't really know like how to like i didn't I didn't know how to like initiate it, you know? So I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I was a little like, let's just see if we can play, you know? And I mean, it, it rolled around to about 15 minutes until our set was over. And yeah, like it was the perfect when when you when you asked, I heard Dave be like, you should play a song. And I was like, oh, I can play a song. <laughs> and so, well, no, yeah, that was, it was really fun actually. And it was, yeah just thundering throughout the whole thing. But it was nice because that song, um, Brighter Someday, I had actually like kind of just finished writing it maybe like a few days ago. That's and fantastic. so it was, thanks. And so it was one of those that I was like anxious to get to play. Sure. And um, so it, it, one quick question on on the, the marriage kind of thing too, is like, it's a powerful partnership. Uh, I'm sure you guys have many ways to even like communicate non-verbally, not only as musicians, but as, you know, is it hard for you to then bring in a new person to join the band? Because it's like, why can't you keep up with this? But you guys are on such a different level communication wise. Have you ever found that to be, you know, intimidating to the artist or, or is it just kind of flow? Um, honestly, in the past, like we've had a couple of different drummers over the years to put it lightly. More than a couple. So we had this one guy for many years and we were like really good friends with him. Not going to go into that, but not with him anymore. And mm -hmm. he was, he was totally cool. Like, cause he, you know, he right. would bring his, his girl with them and like we would hang out all together. Um, but anyway, so then we got another drummer and he really wasn't okay with the whole married dynamic. Sure. So then <laughs> that didn't work out. And right. Kelly just like fits right into the mix. He's super chill. He plays great. Um, yeah, he's just, uh, it's, seems to be working. It's well. usually not an issue cause we're cool. Like we can, we we not like we're not all over each other and like being weird. right yeah right 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 the no I think it's just a it's a it's a powerful partnership even in and of itself it doesn't need to it's nothing you're doing to create that but I can just tell that 
you know, that might be a problem. But I was going to mention that it clearly isn't because the chemistry the four of you guys have on stage is terrific. Um, you know, it, it's just this, uh, you know, you can just tell you guys are on the same page, obviously, are you know, well rehearsed, but also just talented musicians because you know where the other one's going. Um, kind of moment has that jazz kind of feel to it where you're letting each other go somewhere and it's like, all right, I'll meet you over there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just fun to watch. Awesome. I think it'd be funny, like, if you were passive aggressively writing songs, you know, like, <laughs> take out the garbage. Here's my new song I want to introduce to you. <laughs> like, walk right. the dog, please. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> like, I was just going to go back to the opening sequence. There was that moment, like I said, when that song comes to that like resolution and then and out like and you get this smile on your face. And I love watching musicians who are like they're just so into that moment in their own music. Like, is there something you can share that like are you like waiting for that as like as an artist, as a musician, as a listener? Like, is there something about that that you can share about that moment? Yeah, I mean, because at that point, I'm I'm not even like. A musician right there. I'm I'm enjoying Julian's bass solo, honestly. And that's, that's what I figured. Yeah. Yeah. It's so nice. And like listening listening back, honestly, I'm like, oh my guitar's so loud and I'm playing way too much. I wish I I wish I turned down. I wish I played less strumming. Um I know oh, I disagree. But and we can blame the sound guy for that anyway. But no, I, I think it was this great moment of the whole band coming together. But you're right, like Julian's kind of crushing it right there. Yeah, but it's, it's his his spot to shine, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then just when we cool. come back into that chorus, it's just such a nice, I just love that. Just it as is. a listener, not even as a, the guy playing the song. Like, I, I'm just like, oh, that sounds, feels so good. I know. Yes. That's the thing. Like, you want to, that's what we always strive for. At least me, well, I think we all as a group do it. But, like, when I'm personally writing, I'm always just like, I want it to be something that, like, I'm not going to, one, I'm not going to get sick of playing or singing. Two, right, right. I have fun playing and singing it. And three, as do I, would I enjoy this as a listener? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And here it comes. This is the moment right here where <laughs> it hits this moment and then there he goes. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but I, I imagine right you're right. Like, there's, you're, you're playing this song many, many, many times over and the audience, you want them to feel like it's the first time you've ever done it. And there's these probably very special moments where you're like, that was different than ever before. Mm hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with a solo that's not written, you know, he's just, he's improvising that and, mm -hmm. and just shredding and it's awesome. So we have this really other funny moment uh, where even just the K did, hits hard. Like we were even saying it during, while he was playing, we're like, wow, it sounds like there's like an oh, exclamation point on his snare. Like, it's right. just like he hits it and then he's destroying this kit. And then here comes this amazing part. He hits so hard, the symbol goes clear <laughs> off and then he's just shrugging and now he's got to try and play without <laughs> that and Brees is laughing hysterically <laughs> Poor Kelly didn't what? even know any of that's going on no idea what do you do in that situation you can't like run over there and put it back on this and is this is actually the, the second thing that happened because yeah earlier, earlier the, the the mic dropped yes yeah <laughs> Um, and, it's and, and that was the thing we were talking about it and then I we were watching and it's the the microphone that's above that symbol just goes and it just like dropped low and that one the 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 guy who's just off stage noticed it right away so he comes out pokes it up he tightens it much tighter and then he kind of tightens it one more time and Kay like gives him a nod and off he goes he destroys that symbol it took the guy like four minutes to come out on stage we're all like he's like <laughs> phantom hitting a symbol and it was like like i felt bad for him because it's like he's like and then he like would remember he's like that's right that's not there anymore and, then I even, <laughs> and i'm even thinking to myself i'm like kelly probably is wondering why isn't he hitting that what? symbol anymore <laughs> Because no, it's going to sound no totally idea. different to you. Don't, don't give her that credit. She has no Honestly, idea. Honestly, I really oh, don't right, well. <laughs> I wonder, like, the, the guy watching you who's supposed to be taking care of that was just, like, into the music. He's like, oh, yeah, I should probably go fix that. <laughs> I should probably fix it. <laughs> and the other thing, too, is it felt, it almost looked like it was choreographed. It fell so beautifully. Like, it just rolled down and just landed right it there. Did. And it made a really nice sound on the way down. Uh, it sure did. Yeah. It, like, it's just sitting right there. Like, oh, that's where it belongs. I'm going to watch more of it. Yeah, it does this time. Yep, it's just it just sits right there. It's like <laughs> it was great. <laughs>